So MATLAB makes it very simple to make graphical user interfaces. All you have to do is type guide into the command window and the guide quick start will pop up. You can open existing GUI files that you have or create new ones from these templates. For this class, you really only need to use the blank, although there are some interesting features to the other ones that you might want to look into on your own time. So click OK and you're brought to this blank template. You have a bunch of options. You can use push buttons, edit text um, boxes, static text boxes, and axes. You also have a bunch of other options that you don't really need to use in this course. Um, in order to illustrate some of these, we're going to make a little graphical tool that will plot a simple line AX plus BY equals C given a user inputted A, B, and C. To make this, we would need a push button which you would press in order to solve the function. So when you push on this, you get an inspector that gives you a bunch of options. You can change your font name and font size. You can pick whatever you want, just make sure people can read it. You can change a lot of things having to do with the appearance of this. The most important things for you to note though are the string, which is what shows up in there. Um, if I'm using a solve push button, I would probably put solve here. And the tag. The tag is important because this is how you identify your handle whenever you use your M file and create functions. So I would call this solve. But you can call it whatever you want. Make sure you remember these though, because you will need them for when you're actually creating functionality. So we'll consider that done. Um, you can also create edit text boxes where your user can input a number and what they input is a string. Keep that in mind. So you have other options here. You might want to look into the position. You can create and move things around by hand just by dragging and dropping, and you can change the size similarly. But you can also put that in here in order to make things more uniform. And you have the option to copy and paste and drag around. And when you copy and paste, it maintains every aspect of the original except the tag. You're going to have to go in and give it its own tag name. So. This is pretty easy to do, and so I'm not actually going to go through the process of drawing one out. I instead created one already. It looks like this. Um, these are all static text. I created them using this command. These are edit text. This is a static text, and it's pretty obvious what these are. Note that I use static text for the answers because you don't want your user to go in and mess around with that. And when you make a plot, you just go here and you drag to make it the size you want. The tags for these are A, B, C, Y, and slope, and axis one. I didn't really bother to change that one around, but you can. So now I can save this, and when you save it, MATLAB will create an M file for it, which when you're saving it for the first time, and usually for subsequent times, it'll just pop up automatically. I'm not sure why it's not doing so now. So I will just open it. It's being a bit annoying right now. Anyway, so normally when you save, this is what will immediately pop up. And there are a bunch of things about this that you really don't need to understand. Um, one convenient thing is that you can push on this and it'll have a drop down for all of these. Don't worry about the create functions. The callbacks for each of your user inputted variables are where you can put in exception handling. We're not going to require you to do that and I'm not going to show any exception handling, but that's an option if you want to take it. What we will definitely be using is the solve callback, which is what is executed when the person pushes the solve button. So the first thing that you need to do is get the information that the user has inputted. To do that, you're going to use string to num because what your user has input is a string and that's not really useful to us for actually finding our slope or our intercept or really anything that you're going to want to do in MATLAB. So to do that you use the get command and note that MATLAB is helpfully telling me everything I can do which is a bit annoying but you can do handles and dot your tag for whatever it is. Here it's just A and then you tell it what type of object it is. These are all strings and I suppress the output. You don't really have to suppress the output, but I like to keep my command window clean. So I just do that for all of mine. And hopefully you make fewer typos than I do. But 
that gives you your three variables. And then I wanted to find the y-intercept, which we know from our lovely basic math is just c over b. But we want to be able to display it, so I'm just going to num to string. And that's all I have to do for that. And then my slope is just going to be num to string of the negative a over b. So then I want to actually set the boxes that I have for these two variables on my GUI. So to do that, you use the set command and you do handles dot the tag that you want, so y, and then it's a string, and then you say what variable corresponds to it, so int. You can put the variable, no, the variable, the value directly there, or not, it's really up to you. I like doing it, um, having the variable already defined. And then for this one, we have handles dot slope, it's a string, save to the slope. Now we want to plot. Um, it doesn't really matter what you're choosing in this example for your plot range. We could have had boxes where the user could input their min and max. That wouldn't have been a problem. But for the sake of example, we're just going to do it from 0 to 10. Why not? And then y is just going to be c over b minus a over b times x. And now we want to plot. So you need to tell it where to plot. So the axes you're interested in are these. And then I'm going to just do what you would normally do. Of course, you can do more exciting plot things, but that's the basic you need to do. And so you're basically done now. You just need to update the GUI display. So to do that, you just type in this command and save. And then we press this button to run. So now we can try it out. Um, you should always try a couple of numbers and make sure it's doing what you think it should. But there you have it, a very simple working GUI.